I want to talk to you today about Alzheimer and how terrible of a disease it is. To realize this, imagine losing your brain cells. Soon, you lose your chain of thoughts, your words. I, for example, couldn't be here and deliver this speech if I had Alzheimer. Then it gets worse. You start losing your memories. You forget your friends. You forget your families. Last, you forget how to speak, how to move, and you forget yourself. And it doesn't have a cure. What's even worse is that you know this. You know that once you get it, it's only going to get worse and worse. Or at least you know it until you start forgetting it. Now imagine this happening to a country. It will start losing its elites, its brain cells. It loses its inventors, its economists, its politicians, its artists, its very creators of tomorrow. Soon it will lose its economic stability, its culture, its language, and therefore itself. These are the dramatic brain drain effects that affect developing countries today. So recently, I've started to wonder, why does this happen? And I think it has something to do with the word country. If you pay attention, you'll see that the word you is embedded in country. If we take it out, what's left might not seem much, CNTR. But with a little bit of imagination and reminding ourselves that the low, develop, uh, the low level of economy and corruption that usually, that usually characterizes these developing countries, you start to realize that if you live in such a country, you're, you have some limits to your full potential, to your future, your dreams. That such a country will limit your path in life, will control you. Now, I believe that my country, Romania, suffers from Alzheimer. Because it's an uh, ex-communistic country with average universities and low salaries, its brightest minds emigrate to study at the world's top universities and never come back. By continuously losing its elites, Romania, well, Romania's situation will only get worse and worse. And before, before it knows it, it will end up in a vicious spiral that has no cure, like Alzheimer. In the past 10 years, it, only, it already lost 4 million people. 4 million. That's twice the population of Slovenia. So it seems to me that a fatal diagnostic has been casted, and there's not much we can do about it. However, we should remember that Alzheimer's is a disease for the old. And even though I'm mature enough to realize the limits of the world around us, I still think I'm too young to accept such a tragic faith. So recently, I started to wonder, what can I do to change this? And pretty soon, I realized that that we have much more power than we imagine over it. Last summer, I wanted to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, and I'm by far the worst person to do this. And my friends, my family, and everyone around it felt a continuous need to keep reminding me of this, that I'm too young, I don't have no mountain climbing experience, I'm too irresponsible, and I have no money. So what do you do when everywhere around you keep hearing, give up? Give up. Give up. You can't do it. Just give up. You, you turn your expedition into a national motivational campaign. <laughs> right? Because if you succeed, then you'll be living proof to all of them that no matter how crazy your idea is, you can accomplish it. And mine was quite crazy because I only planned this two months in advance. But guess what? Two months later, I succeeded. I was at the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, 5,895 meters. Well, 5,896, because I was jumping. <laughs> so, at 21 years of age, I've lived my dream. But that's only when the true adventure started. I got back home, and I was, I was surprised. I, I was shocked by how many letters I got from people I've never met before, saying how I changed their lives. There was one girl who said, I made her realize how superficial she was. Uh, another one who said that because I didn't give up, I inspired her to pursue her dreams, dreams that she buried under the carpet for the last years. How I basically inspired these people to try. 
And then I had an epiphany. I realized that Romanians don't try. They give up. And they give up way too easily. As soon as the situation is a bit rough, the elites leave. As soon as the elites leave and the country situation starts looking bad, Romanians wait. They wait for the elites to come back and save them. They wait for the politicians to stop being corrupt. But they don't do anything, they wait. So then I, that's when I realized that Romania's problem isn't brain drain. Romania's problem is a national culture of giving up. And to be fair, I prefer brain drain. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to solve that than actually uh, motivate an entire nation. But as I said, I will not accept such a tragic faith. Because I believe inside that Romania has incredible potential. But like people with Alzheimer, it has forgotten. It has forgotten to be brave and let it shine. And that's when I had another idea. Because I asked myself, so how do you remind a nation of its strength? It's easy. It's with the power of example. Look at me. I'm a 21-year-old kid that doesn't know what to do with his life. And still, by climbing a mountain, which is not really a great achievement, I motivated about 100 people to do something. If I can get truly inspiring people, people that break world records, people that achieve greatness every day, I could motivate millions. So how do you find these examples? Guess. If you said the very elites that left the country initially, then bingo. Now the question is, how do you motivate the motivators? How do you motivate these people that work day and night to achieve the top, the top results at Harvard or MIT? Or people that hold high positions of responsibility in Google or IMF to take time off and volunteer for your cause? You might think it's with a great big whip. We torture them until they accept. Ironically, no. It's how the previous speaker from um, Perpetuum Jazile, they don't need to be motivated. Because no matter how large your salary is or how big your success is, when your home, your nation, your very roots are falling apart and you play a role in that, you'll never feel accomplished. To get them involved, I would simply share their stories of hard work, sacrifice, and success and show them how much these stories inspire Romanians back home to do something, to fight for their problems. Tell them how much it empowers them. In other words, I would make them an offer they can't refuse. So, um, that's when I realized that I could actually do something, that I could actually change my country's future. So I started researching into these elites, and pretty soon I found out I wasn't alone in this fight. I heard about GRASP, an organization that has been doing this for the last four years. When I met the first GRASPers, I instantly knew I belonged amongst them. Because they're Romanians from the future. Somehow, their genes are immune to Alzheimer. First, because they may not climb mountains, but they move them every day. And second, because GRASP is not one Kilimanjaro campaign but a continuous series of projects like it. By training Romania's future diplomats in summer schools, or by supporting its students through its Mentorship for Success program, or by caring for its young entrepreneurs through its Startup Your Idea campaign, GRASP aims to cure Romania from Alzheimer by 2020. And it will do this because the programs that they offer teach Romanians a very simple but also very powerful lesson. That the power lies in their hands. That it's not the country that controls you, but you control you. You control your future. And once you see this lesson, you learn the new one, which is that societatea civilă ești tu, și eu, și eu, și eu. Which means civil society is you, and me, and me, and me. And basically, that says that a country is just formed of a lot of views. So once you control you, you actually control the country. By such a simple change of perspective, GRASP has managed to gather more than 100 elites in the last four years. 
since they have been fighting not only to stop Romania's brain drain effect, but to continuously improve Romania's image worldwide and also to educate its people, but more importantly, to continuously remind the people back home that even, no matter how small or how young you are, the same great power lies within you. You can do exactly the same things. So, basically, GRASP is turning the old, lazy Romania into a young, optimistic fighting power. So you might say, wait, this whole problem started from Romania having Alzheimer's. If the problem solved, does that mean that we have a cure for Alzheimer? Unfortunately, no, because we're not even doctors. Um, however, we had a bit of a twist to it. What if those selves that initially left came back to you and said, since I left you, I invented this nuclear particle accelerator to replace the old one at CERN. Or I wrote the best romantic novel in the world. Or I made this beautiful painting, which is now in a museum. And I'm just one tiny little brain cell. If I could do that, then maybe you should get off your lazy Alzheimer ass and go and stop complaining about losing memories, but make new ones. Maybe you should go and re-obtain a perfect 10 at the Gymnastic Olympics, like Nadia Komanech did. Or maybe you should stop complaining about how people forget about Brunkush and his amazing column of infinity and recreate tomorrow's incredible sculptures. Remind them of his greatness. Or stop looking at how Eminescu's books are getting recycled into today's gossip magazines and do something about it. Rewrite those poems that make your heart melt and dance in the same time. Once again, rewrite poetic history. In one word, if there's one thing that Alzheimer taught Romanians, is that if you can't be the old you, then maybe you should go and make a better you. Now you might say, why do I care? How does this help me? Well, in everything I just said, replace Romania with Eastern Europe, or even the Eastern world. And you'll see that we'll have the same problem. Or is it the same opportunity? Thank you. <laughs>